Hi, my name is Jason Brown with Boone County 4-H. Welcome to my 4-H Civil War videos. I produce these videos for my fifth grade students, but I hope that you'll be able to enjoy them as well. In this video, you're going to see uh, talk. Uh, what we're going to talk about is Union soldiers, and we're going to talk about their life in the military, some of the manual of arms, uh, how they loaded and fired their weapons, and some things related uh, to that information. When soldiers begin to train, they're going to be trained to drill, and that's one of the first things they'll receive. Obviously, just being by myself, I'm not able to show you drill and those kind of activities. But they would be first issued once they were issued their rifle. Again, it's going to be an infield rifled musket or it's going to be an 1861 Springfield. But they'll be taught certain levels of manual of arms, how to carry their rifle and different things like that. And I'm going to demonstrate some of the, the drills that they'll be taught as far as manual of arms. And so if a soldier is just standing and he wants to come to attention, It'll be called to order arms, and he's going to place the rifle right here beside himself with his hand just slightly holding on to the rifle. Now, when it comes to most transitions between uh, different ways of holding the rifle, one of the ways that you're going to hear is the call to shoulder arms. And a lot of times what you'll hear in military um, sort of orders at that time, you'll hear the first word and then the second word will follow so that you know from that first word uh, what's going to happen and then what it is you're using to do that. So as an example, it would be shoulder, arms. So shoulder, that's where it's going. Arms, well, that's the thing that you're taking to your shoulder. So the command will be shoulder, arms. The soldier's going to lift, take the rifle, and hold it right here and that is the maneuver for shoulder arms. And of course, if the command comes to order arms, he's gonna take it, put it back down at the bottom, okay? If he's in place rest, he's gonna stand right th like this. The muzzle's pointing in a direction where it's gonna be safely pointing away from anyone that is around that person within their rank, and then the command comes to, show to order arms. Another command after they've said shoulder arms, going to bring it up and then it might come a command while you're marching like uh, right shoulder shift arms you're going to turn the rifle you're going to pull it up and you're going to bring it up like this okay and then shoulder arms you're just going to let it drop bring it back to that shoulder arms position so again um, right shoulder shift arms and turn it move it up right there. Might bump your hat a little bit. Uh, that was something that was a common issue they'd deal with. So shoulder, arms. Another move that they might have would be called support arms. And when that call, command is come, support arms. Soldier will bring the rifle up. They'll turn it. They'll place it right here against their left side. And then they will support arms. On a march, oftentimes they would go through several of these kind of order commands so you didn't have to carry your rifle in the same position the whole time. Shoulder, arms. Okay, there's several kind of things like that that they would do. Oftentimes on marching though, uh, they would oftentimes say um, a route step and that just means carry the rifle uh, the best you can as long as it's safe and uh, march, but you don't have to keep time and step with everybody. And so oftentimes on long marches, they would just do a step where you could just relax. You could carry the rifle in any way that you wanted. And lots of ways that guys would carry the rifle uh, to kind of keep relaxed on long marches. I don't want to forget is, is fixing bayonet. Uh, the bayonets were not used a lot during the Civil War for uh, issues related to uh, military activity. I want to point out here that even though by this point, militarily speaking, bayonets were becoming obsolete as far as military force, they still had their military applications. One of the most important ones was using them to stack arms. The bayonets would be interlocked together so the rifles could be stood in sort of a triangular shape so that that would keep the soldiers from having to lay them on the ground. Fix bayonet right here. Pull it out, unfix bayonet.
Now, we talked about talking about the, uh, the ammunition that they would have used. And in my hand, I have the percussion cap. And we're going to talk about here in a second how they would have used that to prime paper cartridges. In the paper cartridge, and I'll move the, the mini ball, at the end would be a mini ball. It's a 58 caliber slug made out of soft lead. One of the reasons why we have so many casualties during the Civil War is this right here, the mini ball. A soft lead ball that when it penetrated the body, uh, it would smash or mushroom, and it would oftentimes just uh, cause a lot of internal damage as it would rip through. It would oftentimes cause uh, bones to be shattered, and thus the reason you have so many amputations during the Civil War. And so that mini ball uh, was a big part of that. Behind the mini ball would just be a pack of black powder, and it would have this pigtail on the end, the soldier would bite that pigtail to expose the, the black powder there uh, so that the, he could then load down into uh, the gun. And we're going to show you what that looks like. These infill rifled muskets in the 1861 Springfield at that time, they weren't loaded here at the breech. They're actually loaded here at the muzzle end. Let's go back to the breech for a second. We talked about the percussion cap. The soldier's going to bring the rifle back to what we would call half cocked. Okay, that's a safety place. Uh, you can't fire the weapon. And they're gonna take that little percussion cap, dig that out, and they're gonna stick it there on the little cone. What'll happen is when the rifle is pulled back and fired, it will strike that and it's gonna send a spark down. And in the bottom here of the barrel is gonna be the black powder and the mini ball. And it's gonna basically project once that burns that powder, project the, the bullet or the, the 58 caliber mini ball down range. Soldier's gonna bring the cartridge around. Again, like we said, they're gonna use their mouth to tear that cartridge. And they're, now they're gonna load it by holding their hands away from the barrel. And the reason you wanna do that is that if the gun's already been fired, there's gonna be uh, embers down in the bottom. And if you go like this with your hand away, if some of those embers ignite that newly uh, supplied black powder, it's not gonna fire and, and harm your hand or hurt your hand. So they're gonna load that. They're gonna take the mini ball. After they've loaded the powder, they'll take the mini ball and that they'll place it right there, as you can see. And then they'll use the rammer to push that down. So what we're gonna show you now is sort of the, the view, uh, a long view of how they would load, okay? The order would come to load. A soldier is going to take his hand. He's going to put his rifle here between his feet. He wants the barrel away from his face, obviously. You know, gun safety is not a new thing. It's a long history of gun safety uh, for obvious reasons. He's going to reach back and handle cartridge. So he's going to open up. He's going to pull out one of the cartridges. The next command, tear cartridge. So you're going to tear the cartridge, exposing the black powder. Again, he's gonna load and try to keep his fingers away from the edge there, load the powder down, okay? And he's gonna tear the paper away from the conical bullet, and he's gonna press the mini ball down, and then will come the command of ram cartridge. Pull the rammer up, flip it over, place it in, he'll ram the cartridge to the bottom. Return rammer, he'll pull it up, Place it in. Now, when he goes to put the rammer back down, notice how I'm gonna use my pinky finger to put the rammer back down. Because again, if there's embers down in there that might ignite the powder, you sure don't want your hand here. And so you're gonna use a pinky to ram it, okay? Then you're gonna prime. You're gonna come back to this position, bring the rifle to half cocked. You're gonna pull out a percussion cap. And just like we show you in the close-up video, you're gonna see they're gonna put that percussion cap on, okay? Once they've done that, now the first time they're firing, after they've done that, they will come to shoulder arms, okay? That lets their captain know that they're ready to fire. Now we're gonna cut for a second. I'm gonna show you how the rifle fires. I wanted to let everyone know that we use the highest levels of safety gear in this uh, demonstration and that we were using blanks during the process of loading and firing the weapon. But we do want to acknowledge that some of you as parents may still feel a bit nervous about this video and the demonstration. Uh, and if you do, we respect that. And I would suggest that you just simply fast forward to the end of the video. 
Soldiers in line of battle would be waiting for the command. And the command would come in various ways, and we're not going to go through all uh, the ways that they would fire in their, their particular orders. But understand that they would have been massed together so that they could fire at once and concentrate their firepower at the enemy. It's one of the reasons why casualties in the Civil War are so great, because at this time, uh, a lot of tactics were mash your men together and march up and take a position. And with the firepower being so highly advanced at that point, people charging up and taking a position would often be decimated because things like even the infield rifled musket, uh, it had an ability to, uh, it had a great deal of accuracy up to about 100 yards. And so men getting very close to the enemy uh, could oftentimes see a company or a regiment take quite a few casualties simply because they were using an old tactic of mash yourself together, run up and take a position. What I'm gonna show you is how they would fire. And they would simply get the command and they would say, ready. At that point, the soldier's gonna step back. He's gonna to come to full cocked at that moment. It's gonna be aim. He'll come up and point the rifle. And then the command would come to fire. So I'm gonna show it one more time how they loaded and fired. So I'm gonna load, tear the cartridge. Now, a trained soldier, it's really hard to pull off, I've tried, a trained soldier could fire up to three rounds a minute, loading exactly as you're seeing me load right now. Uh, again, I've tried it, it's extremely difficult to be able to pull off, uh, but it is possible with a little bit of training. And obviously they would have trained a lot more than we do just doing living history or what you're seeing me do. Uh, they would have trained all day at times, especially when they're new recruits, to sort of solidify in their mind what it was expected that they were going to do. Okay, so we're at the ready, aim, 